Hello guys, Grumpy. Uh, welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a solar powered quarry via an electrical engine. Now if you're just playing Tech It and you came to this video, this is not going to work in Tech It. This is only for Feed the Beast. I do have a tutorial on how to do it in Tech It. It's called Solar Powered Quarry via an Energy Link. So this one is Solar Powered Quarry via an electrical engine for Feed the Beast. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to need is a couple new new uh, machines. You'll need a carpenter's bench and you'll need a thermionic fabricator. This is just what you'll need on top basic machines that you might need to build other stuff. But these are the machines that are specific to this project. But anyway, let's go over these machines. First of all, you notice they have engines on top of them. Well, these take MJ power to run. Now, I use hobby steam engines for these machines. And basically the way this works is um, you put your fuel in here and you put water on this side. Now you have a couple ways to fill this water buck this up. Now here's the way I do it. I have an infinite water source right next to all my machines and I just right click and that fills it up. Let me go over here. To see this machine's not full so I can actually put some water in there. But all I got to do is right click the machine and it puts the water in there. Another way to do it is you can right click the machine when you don't have the bucket selected and you can put the bucket up in there. And it would consume that water and put the bucket down here but apparently the machine is full now so anyway that's that the steam engine let me show you what some of these bars do this is the water level this is the how much MJ is in it you don't really need that this tells you the temperature of the machine and this tells you how much steam these two right here is something to look at but here's the power output it outputs 1.6 MJ per tick and it's taking fuel as soon as this bar drops to nothing it'll start burning up these wood planks but anyway, let's show you what you're going to need to make in this carpenter's bench. First of all, you're going to need a soldering iron. Now, to make a soldering iron, let me show you the recipe. Oh, let me show you the recipe one more time. There we go. You need to put a piece of bronze and iron inside of the carpenter's bench. And this thing is going to take all the MJ and put it in this bar. And once this bar fills up, you'll see a soldering iron pop up over here. And you can just grab it. Now I'm not going to make a soldering iron because I don't need one. I will make something else though. Let's go ahead and make a large circuit board. This is another ingredient we'll need. But just remember you do need a soldering iron. Now that's just the recipe. That actually didn't consume any of our materials. This just memorized what we need. So it's actually going to pull the resources out of here to make it. But you can see this bar filling up. When this bar gets to the top, it's going to make one of these large circuit boards. So basically that's the gist of it. You'll need a uh, large circuit board. Maybe more than one if you screw up, but let me show you what you do with this large circuit board now. Oh, not quite yet. We need uh, electron tubes to program the circuit board, so that was the next step. Here is the thermionic fabricator. This is used to make electron tubes. Now first of all, you see this bar right here? This is temperature gauge. We have the engine running and this engine is heating up. As soon as it gets to right here, it's going to start melting this glass and this glass is used to make the electron tubes. Now you need three types of electron tubes. Uh, you need bronze, iron, and tin. There's actually one more that will do out of work in these electrical engines but the other one kind of sucks. And you can actually only use one of each type. There's going to be three slots to put tubes and so we need a bronze electron tube, an iron electron tube, and a tin. Let's go ahead and make an iron one just to show you how to make one. They're all the same. The only difference between the recipes is what kind of metal you put in there. So if you want to make an iron one, use iron ingots. If you want to make a tin one, put tin ingots, etc., etc. But once this thing heats up, uh, once it gets to its temperature, as you can see, it's got a little ways to go. Uh, we'll see an electron tube pop up here, and I believe it's going to make like four of them. But um, we actually got to put some materials down here too. There we go. So we'll do it just one second, one second. Well, that's basically the gist of it. I'm not going to say and wait, but that electron tube is going to pop up there. Do you have some built? You see the gist of it. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make the, th the carpenter's bench or the thermionic fabricator. It's pretty self-explanatory. Just look it up in the recipe book. You just need to know how to use them, and that's how to use them. Now, whenever you're done using stuff, if you've got one of these machines with fuel in it, go ahead and take it out because it'll keep burning if you don't. But anyway, the next thing we need, since we have our solder iron, we have a large circuit board, and we have our electron tubes, we need to select the, the soldering iron. You see we have it in our inventory, and you need to right click. It opens up the screen. 
this screen. Now what you want to do is put one electron tube of each type. Remember we got bronze, iron, and tin. So put one of each of those up here. And that's actually going to consume them as soon as we put this large circuit board in there. So it's a good idea to kind of memorize it. Now each one of those electron tubes added an effect to the uh, large circuit board. So here we can see the effects. Now it doesn't tell you which did which, but those are the three you want to do. The copper one kind of sucks, so don't even bother with that. This, these are the three you want to use. So the one of them increased the output by 4MJ. Another one increases the intake by 15EU. Uh, another one reduces the intake by 1EU. And another one increases the output by 2MJ and increases the intake by 7MJ. Now by default, an electrical engine uh, has an input of 6EU and an output of 2MJ. So if we do the math here, we added six more MJ, so this thing puts out a total of uh, eight MJ now instead of just two. But the input's gone from six all the way to 28. So 28 is roughly three low voltage solar rays if you're not using the Greg Tech mod. But if you are using the Greg Tech mod, um, it's going to be three advanced solar panels, and that's actually what I'm using. I highly recommend using the Greg's mod. It makes the game more fun, at least for me. But um, with this build, you'll either need three advanced solar panels or six. Now, if you, the reason I say you need three or six, if you're just first starting off, uh, resources might be scarce. You can get away with three. Just put three of them in line with the electrical engine. We're going to go over that in a minute. But you'll need three. And what happens at night, the machine will shut down because it's not going to have enough power to run or to run very 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 slowly because these advanced solar panels actually put out power at night too. During the day they put out 8 EU per tick but at night they put out 1 EU per tick so they can actually uh, get uh, electricity off the moonlight so but it's only 1 EU. But anyway if you're just starting off you can get away with 3 but if you've got the resources go ahead and build 6 of them and get a battery box too. If, if you build 6 of them go ahead and get a battery box because 6 is more than you need to st um, run the quarry and so what the bat box does is just charges up during the day so at night time um, uh, your quarry will still run. In fact you may not even need a bat box because these advanced solar panels they also have internal storage but I figure it's better to be safe and make sure your quarry is running. But anyway let me make sure I got everything we need. We already have a quarry over there and so I don't have to bring that. I already got three solar panels. I have everything I need so basically I'm going to stop recording and when I get over to the quarry I'm going to show you how to set it up. Okay, here we are over at the quarry. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up the landmarks just in case some people may not be familiar with it. But this is called a landmark and this is used to set up the dimensions of the quarry. If you just throw a quarry down, it's going to make a small one. If you want to make a bigger one, you got to do this. Now it's going to take three landmarks and you're basically going to need a square. But you put one here and one way down wherever and then we'll have to place a third one. Now you need to make sure and place them all the same height. And let's come to actually come down here and do it. But as you can see, we just dropped down an elevation, so I'll have to place this third landmark um, on top of a block. Just like that. Now, if I right click the landmark, there we go, it drew the frame. Now, when I place this quarry down, that tells the quarry what dimensions to mine in. So I kind of left this part off my last tutorial what I did on the energy link and some people were asking questions so I thought I'd go ahead and add it in this time but uh, we need to get our quarry block we we'll place it down and you're instantly going to see those landmarks disappear or they don't disappear they just pop off so you got to go pick them up uh, if you want them and I do need them because uh, I only own three right now <laughs> and I don't have any lapis it takes lapis to make them they're very easy to make. It's a redstone torch with a piece of lapis on top of it. But anyway, that's their frame. Where'd that thing go? Figures it'd fall down there. Okay. So that's our frame. Let me go ahead and eat a little food. And we have the quarry set up. Now we got to set up all the machinery. So we'll do that next. And by the way, if you're first starting a quarry, uh, before if you don't have enough resources, you can use a different type of engine. This just this is the best way because it's using renewable energy. But next thing we'll do is place down our electrical engine. And that thing's going to have to have a torch or a lever in front of it. Uh, a redstone torch or a lever just turned on. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and uh, stick that there. Let's build us a little platform, more of a platform. 
Okay, so our next thing we want to do is place down some cable. Now you can actually use copper wire for this, but I'm high rolling, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to go ahead and put down the bat box. Now think about the bat box. It has a dot. You need to make sure the dot faces the electrical engine because the dot is the output of a bat box. Battery box is stores the EU. So what's going to happen is it's going to help store electricity at night so the quarry will still run. We're going to be generating excess electricity during the day. And this is going to help us uh, keep the quarry going 24-7. So next thing we want to do is I have six advanced solar panels. Again, you can use just three You can buy, uh, and uh, the quarry just won't run at night. So there's three. We won't need that. And we'll put three in the front here. So there's our power. Now these things are already running. Now they're going to be storing up electricity in this battery box. They're going to fill it up pretty darn quick too. But these things also have an internal storage. You can see right here it's 32,000 EU. So probably don't even need the bat box. But anyway we put it. What the heck. Okay. Next thing you'll need is some kind of either stone or cobblestone transport pipe or something. Place it down there. This is where the output's going to come out at. And next thing, we'll need a diamond pipe. And then we'll need a, a chest of some type to store all of our goods. Just like this. Oops. There we go. And finally, we're going to need. Let me actually grab a piece of cobblestone and I'll need some dirt. Anything you want to throw away, you got to put in this diamond pipe. Now, if the diamond pipe has an output, let's actually dig a hole here. Now, there's a new pipe called the void pipe. You can use it instead of what I'm doing. Basically, what I'm doing is, is I'm putting lava down here, and what it's going to do is destroy all the blocks I don't want. So let's put pipe down there. Okay, now you can see um, anything I don't want is going to fall down in this pit. And so we'll place some lava down there. And I like to make sure it's good and covered up. So there's no way to get fall down in there. This pipe's going to keep you from falling in there. So next we got to program the pipe. It's going to be the black uh, output. So whatever we put in there will get thrown away. We don't want cobble. If you do, don't throw it away. And we don't want dirt. I don't have a piece of gravel, but ideally you want to put gravel in there, or else your core, the, your output chest is going to fill up with some gravel. But it's no biggie. Um, I just don't have any gravel on me. Okay, so this is all set up and going. All we have to do is throw down a redstone torch, and this thing should be in business. So there we go. Now you can see the little mining laser. Now I don't know what you call him. He's a little robot. He's going to build. I don't know what he's doing right now. He's doing something. What's he doing? Okay, now he's building the frame. That's what he should be doing. And then when he gets done building the frame, um, he'll start quarrying. So let me go ahead and stop recording for a second. Once he starts, uh, once he gets done with the frame, I'll show you the next part. Oh, he's still building the frame, but there's one thing I forgot. We got to put in our large circuit board. This is going to increase the power. Because let me show you something right now. I told you this thing uses 6 EU. If I right click this pop right here, it tells you 6 EU. So this engine right now, it's only consuming 6 EU per tick. Let's go ahead and put a large circuit board in there. Now, if I hover over one that's not been programmed, you just see that. But here's the one I programmed. So let's go ahead and stick this in the machine. Um, it just goes right here, and that instantly increases the output. So let's go ahead and right click our pop again and see what we got. 27 EU. So this thing is drawing 27 EU out of the system, which is good. And. Um, at night time this box will help run the machine but these solar panels should they're all charged up now so we've got a massive amount of electricity what's that 32 times 32,000 times 6 plus 40,000 but anyway let me go ahead and stop recording and and we'll start start back up once he's done with the frame okay I'm back here's a couple things I forgot to mention first of all I forgot to mention this uh, something about this electrical engine uh, it will overheat when the first start building the quarry uh, the reason being is that when it, that little robots actually draw in the frame the quarry doesn't consume that much uh, MJ so what happens is the electrical engine it'll turn red 
Uh, cool thing about it, it won't blow up like a build craft engine. What it will do is shut itself off and then it'll stay off until it gets cooled off. Once it cools back down to, to nothing, then it'll turn back on. So it's not something not to worry about. You'll see that. If you see your engine turn red, it's going to shut off and that's normal. Um, other thing I was going to mention is you want to make sure and fill your quarry with water. It's very simple. You can see where I added it um, right here. I just put one water block. And at first it won't it won't um, cover that much of the quarry. It'll just cover like a, it, you know, water only goes out eight blocks. But what happens is every time this thing goes down a layer, the water spreads eight more blocks. So you can see it's not even quite covering that other corner. But it probably will be in the next uh, level or two. But anyway, the reason you want to cover it with water because if this um, quarry runs into lava, uh, it'll stop. So by filling it with water, what happens is the lava instantly turns into obsidian and then it can mine obsidian. So you just want to make sure and do that. And you also get as a byproduct, as a bonus, you'll get tons of obsidian. Let's see if we've got anything yet. We got flour and we got some seeds, so apparently we can get seeds just by knocking down the grass, but we already got quite a bit of ore, uh, quite a bit of everything. So anyway, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you like it and you want to see more of them, please hit the like button. Uh, it helps my channel and it also lets me know that if a video gets a lot of likes, I know to do more videos of that type. So anyways, Grumpy, we will see you next time. I appreciate you watching.